Hello and welcome back. My name is Josh Lipton and today on Finance Soup we will be doing something a bit different. So typically I look at companies from a fundamental analysis. So fundamental analysis is you're looking at the company, the revenue, um, and how much you expect them to bring in in revenue and profits in the future and discounting that back and saying, hey, I want to buy this company at a discount to what I think um, this company is worth on paper. Um, and today, I'm actually going to be doing something a bit different. I spoke to a friend of mine who is a very different kind of investor. His name is Scott, so shout out, Scott. Uh, you're the inspiration for this video, and he is a momentum trader. Uh, he very much likes uh, looking at uh, small cap stocks, sm uh, small cap cryptos, and looking at the uh, technical analysis and looking for short squeezes. So he's very much a momentum trader, and we were discussing AMC, and uh, I have a very different thought on AMC than him. He is a big believer. I am not. Uh, but today I want to go over AMC as an example just to step outside my comfort zone a little, take a look and see maybe uh, challenge my own beliefs. Uh, so let's start by saying, you know, AMC is, there is no case to be made on a fundamental basis. Here we have, I'm a big fan of macro trends, uh, the price to sales of, uh, of AMC. So here we have since 2015, you can see the price to sales, which is at the bottom, has always been below one. It's typically actually been trending even lower even before COVID, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.15. Um, and sales were going up, but you can see sales have cratered. And since then, the price to sales is through the roof. You know, it's the, the sales are down 90%, um, but the price to sales, actually, like this share price is higher than when they were making, you know, record sales. So, um, you know, here we have record sales. The price was 7 Today, it's the price share price is four times higher despite the sales going down 40%. So, you know, one, um, the market is forward looking. So, that doesn't just because sales are down doesn't necessarily mean the stock price couldn't be up. You know, if you thought prices were going to bounce back and then some, there could be some fundamental shift. Again, the market's always forward looking, but I personally think we've peaked. Uh, I don't think we're ever going to get back to peak sales. And even if we were, um, you know, the share price could maybe be seven, maybe nine, ten. Um, but this stock is now divulged from fundamentals. I can't even look at a PE because there are no earnings. Uh, this is now a meme stock. I know a lot of people use that derogatory. I, I don't. I mean that in a positive way, actually, that this stock has a cult following, and that does give it power. Because, again, while there is fundamental analysis, there is, I truly do believe in the value of a technical momentum analysis. You know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, the core basic of economics is, is supply and demand. That's really what this is. You know, people typically want a stock because they think it will provide them money in the future. And you could say, oh, I'm going to, this stock's going to go up and provide me money in the future because of the fundamentals. That's one way I look at it. But everyone demands this stock because they think it's going to show up in price or they want it just as a status symbol. You know, a lot of people are doing this as, as they say, a movement. Um, then that does also factor in that is real uh, demand for that stock. And that can lead to uh, big jumps in the sh share price. So I'm not discounting that. I personally am not good at this. Uh, but again, that's why I want to step outside my comfort zone and, and take a look at something. So you know, whilst speaking with Scott, um, you know, he, he mentioned two things why he thinks, you know, I asked him, what, what is your expected share price for this? And he said his cost base is about 35 and he thinks it could go up to 4,000. I personally think he's out to lunch. We discussed, he lowered his expectations a little to 400. I still think that's going to take a lot. Um, though I said, you know, I personally don't think it's going up at all, but I could see it going up to maybe 100, 150 if, if things break right. So I'm going to look through uh, some things right now and show you how I, I got to these fundamental analysis, kind of my fundamental analysis brain looking at technical things. So when looking at any kind of these companies, um, you want to look at a couple different factors. So there's technical analysis, which is where the chart is. Um, so let's look at, uh, sorry, here's the technical analysis. Technical analysis is looking at a chart, and one of the ones you can see is oscillators. So technical analysis, you can see, is it trending upwards, downwards, how's it going, the short term, medium term. One that I like, though, uh, is an oscillator, uh, which basically shows whether it's overbought or oversold based on the ratio of uh, people buying versus selling over the last couple weeks. Um, I think it's called K and D percentage. Um, and this does have some predictive ability. So again, this is a, a tool that you can use. So you can see here, um, just so you know, so here's the oscillators. And when they're both below 20, it typically means it's oversold. That means too many people have sold it. And it and when it then does go over 20, you can see here it was at 6. 
and then it slowly shoots up to 25, uh, that typically means the stock's going to go up. Uh, and same, the vice versa, when it goes over 80 and then drops below 80, that means the stock price is going to go down. We can see there is some predictive ability. It goes up, and you can see here the share price goes up as well. Um, it never really drops below 80. You see a huge spike in the share. And then here we see it start going down, and the share price also goes down. Um, again, we see here it goes below 20. It was at 14 here. If you bought here, the share price was 29. You would have done well, ridden it all the way up to... Again, it goes up to 91 up here, and then it starts breaking down 80. And if you'd sold again, the share prices only come down again. You can see it then a third kind of peak here, 86 down. Again, this is not fundamentals, but there is some predictive ability to. Uh, it, it looks at volume of of buying and selling, and there is some predictive power here. So you know, lately it looks like we might have hit a peak, and, and AMC could just be going down from its recent peak of 43. Again, this is not talking about the long term because there is no long term. Uh, fundamental basis here. This is a short-term uh, strategy, so it looks like AMC could be in the short term headed down. So that's one thing I look at, or again, in my very brief research. Uh, another thing, I love Google Trends. We can see here Google Trends, and we see a huge spike in interest in AMC, and then back down, another huge spike in AMC, and this actually uh, matches up very well those timelines. If we look at stock AMC, you can see here the huge spike, I think it was January 1, and then the second one was June 3rd. So if we look back here, this was Jan, and this was June 3rd. So these two huge rallies from, you know, that was 500%, and this one was 400% spike. So basically to me, it looks like you're going to need a huge spike again. Now, right now, it's low. That doesn't mean it can't happen again, but right now, I'm not seeing any spike. Uh, if you could predict this, obviously, you'd be making a lot of money. Um, and I'm not on chat boards or message boards, but you know, if you do start seeing some, some steam gaining, there is potential for it to spike, but you're going to need to see a big increase, uh, which gets to another thing, which is... Um, where is it here? Here we go. Trade volume. So trade volume. So again, when we look back in January, you can see here was the standard volume, pretty low, and the share price was not moving much. And then one day, the trade volume went all the way up to 1.25 billion shares. Um, and that led to a huge increase in the price. That was that first big spike in the price. So share pr uh, you know, it took 1.25 billion. Then we see another one here, a big spike here, where the share price or the shares movement was 750 share volume. So this is the number of shares that are being traded. To make a huge move, you need a lot of volume. And as you can see lately, the volume has just been low. So again, when I'm looking at this, I'm not seeing a ton of interest. You're going to need to see tons of volume to come in to see this move. And even when you do see tons of volume, you know, first it was 1.25 billion, and you saw it go up 500%, then it was 750, you saw 400%. You know, I think even if you saw a huge spike in volume up to 750 again, let's say you see another 400% move. Um, you know, you're still getting from what's the current share price, 35 bucks. So it's 400%. Of, it's you're going up to 150. That's kind of where my mind was. I can't see 4,000. You need so much, so 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 much volume, and it's never going to happen. Um, even 400 would be very difficult based on the volume. You're not seeing a 10x move. You, you might see a 4 or 5x move from here. Again, if you get that volume, I can't predict that that volume is going to come. Again, this is non-fundamental analysis. Um, and you can even see the implied volatility here is trending down. You can see here huge volatility spikes. We're, we're getting very low on the volatility, the lowest it's been in a very long time. So not saying it can't happen. Um, so one, to see these big spikes, you need volatility. And two... The other thing he's looking at is um, short interest. So you might say, what is short interest? Short interest is when you hold a stock and you hope it goes up, that's called being long. Um, there's another thing called short, which is where you don't own the stock and you hope the price goes down and you benefit when the price goes down. Basically what you do is you borrow shares. I own shares. You borrow them from me. Then you sell them. So they're currently 35 bucks. You borrow from me. You sell it at 35 And then you hope the price goes down in the future and you can buy it back and give them back to me. So you owe me 100 shares. Um, let's say the price goes from 35 to a dollar in the future. Uh, you know, in the, in the future, now you would 
pay you buy each share for a dollar and you make thirty four dollars per share you borrowed from me so that's the goal but what happens if the price goes up well then you actually lose money because if the price goes up and suddenly it's fifty bucks a hundred bucks you would need to buy it at a hundred bucks just to give them back because again you owe me a hundred shares of AMC that's how this short works so um, and this is why you see these big jumps. This is what you say when you see a short squeeze. Basically, the stock price slowly starts going up rapidly. And all these people who said, oh, shit, I'm short, need to keep buying because they don't they want to limit their losses. Again, each dollar that goes up uh, is another dollar that they have to spend in order to pay back the shares. So these short sellers start rushing in to buy shares to cover. That's what's called cover their short position. Uh, but because they all are rushing in, it continues to push the price up. That's partly why you see the volume. So um, that's what a short squeeze is, is when lots of short sellers, the price goes up and lots of short sellers try to cover. So you see a temporary spike in volume. So let's look at short interest. Here we have the short interest over time. Uh, here it is. How many days to short? So we can see here at one point it was very high and that correlated with this big spike in price. Um, but since then, we've seen the days to short has gone down significantly. Uh, and what does that mean? That means it is taking them much less time to cover their entire short position. Basically, there's only so many shares out there that are traded every day. Again, that's volume. Um, that's this. So, you know, let's say you had 100 shares outstanding. Let's say all people had a million shares that were short. Um, and currently, there's 100,000 shares per day traded. I'm making the numbers up. That means it would take 10 days to cover because again, there's a million there's a million shares short and you have 100,000 shares per day. So how many days to cover all your short position? 10. So at one point it was 10. That's when you're in a really bad position. I think this was 10, 11.2 uh, days or 12 days to cover. That can be a very difficult position because the stock price can keep going up and you can't cover your entire position. So you just have to keep going in. Right now, we're down at about one, one day to cover. I think it's actually 1.8. That's much more reasonable. You know, people can cover their position very quickly, which really prevents it from shooting up extremely. So when I look at the position for AMC, there's definitely, again, fundamentally, it's disconnected from reality. But there is value here because people do think there's a short squeeze that could happen. I personally am not seeing uh, a a juicy setup for a short squeeze. I'm not seeing a ton of share volume, uh, short volume. I'm seeing very low uh, volume in, in uh, days to cover your short position. Um, I'm seeing very low trading volume and I'm not seeing a ton of interest in the stock. And also the oscillators, I'm seeing people actually selling out. So you know my friends always saying, oh, diamond hands, this community is strong, they're not gonna sell, which is a, a negative thing. If you have short sellers, you don't want to sell because the fewer people that sell, the more each person has to, uh, it basically can shoot the price up much quicker. If everyone's willing to sell at 20 for a $1 profit, you're not making much. But if no one wants to sell for a $1 profit, you know, then, then these short sellers who need to buy it back have to offer extremely high prices to, to get people to sell. So, you know, the way I see it is people are selling out. They're saying, you know what, I'm, I'm sick of this. I think these things need lots of momentum. I'm just not seeing it. I don't think most people want to wait months and months and months hoping for a short squeeze in the next you know, five months. Could it happen for sure, but the short interest doesn't seem that high. The, the momentum doesn't seem that high, and the upside doesn't seem that high. I'm seeing three to four times upside, not 10x upside. So personally, I would stay away from AMC even as a technical or, or momentum trader and definitely as a fundamental trader. Uh, Scott, this one was for you, so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Everyone else there, if you are a technical trader, fundamental trader, I'd love to get your thoughts. What else should I be looking at if I did want to uh, look at this? What am I missing if you have a difference of opinion from me? Uh, and are there any other stocks you'd like me to look at, either from a fundamental analysis or from a technical analysis? Please let me know your thoughts. Share it down in the comments section below. Again, my name's been Josh Lipton. This has been Finance Soup. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers.